I am Laura Sophie, director of the Museum of Origami in Colonia del Sacramento, Uruguay, and today I have the pleasure to introduce Arnold Tubis. Arnold Tubis is a professor emeritus of physics from Purdue University, California. He is also a prolific book writer and a creator of origami models that range from tessellations to decorative boxes and even manifolds, which is a category of origami that uses banknotes to make all kinds of origami shapes and designs. In this video, Arnold will tell us about his beginnings as an origami book collector and artist and will show us a range of his books and models. I leave you with Arnold Tubis. Hi, my name is Arnold Tubis. I personally hate taking videos of myself. Number one, I just turned 88, so I'm not very photogenic. My introduction to origami occurred about 60 years ago. My day job, most of my life, has been a, as a physicist. I graduated from MIT, got my bachelor's and PhD in theoretical physics. I was a physics professor at Purdue University for 40 years from 1960 to 2000. In the early 1960s, there was a research associate by the name of uh, Takashi Konki, who came from Japan. I started to collaborate with him on some project in physics. One night while having dinner at his apartment with his wife and his kids and my wife and children, his wife started to uh, do some origami. Very simple things, slapping bird, a crane, certain simple boxes, and I was immediately hooked on that. That experience that night was uh, really a turning point as far as my interest in origami. I immediately bought every book I could find on origami. There weren't very many of them. I think only about a half a dozen books in English and on origami in the 19, early 1960s. Some of the, mo the more outstanding ones were by Honda and Kasahara, some of his first books from Japan. In the U.S., Sam Randlett's books. In England, Robert Harbin's. So I became, a, among other things, a collector of origami books. My home today is flooded with thousands of uh, origami books, magazines, journals, convention books, conference proceedings, and so forth. The next sort of highlight of my uh, origami experiences, in 1973, we took a trip to California, San Diego area, the Los Angeles area, San Francisco. I met uh, two people that were very influential, at least in my origami life. One was an Everett Globe. Everett was one of the first systematic collectors of origami books. I remember he had an original edition of, of Senbazuru Orikata, the Japanese book on how to fold a thousand cranes. And I met him in his home in the San Francisco area. He was tremendously helpful to me in getting books from Japan. The other person that was very influential in my origami life was Louise Cooper. Louise lived in Redondo Beach, California. She was the first person who would take my models, whatever models I had made at that time, and draw diagrams. And it was sort of a shock to me to see a model of mine actually diagrammed. And for about 10 years, I used to send her models and she used to diagram for me. I used to obtain books for her. The other thing is that she collected four full file drawers of diagrams of origami models from the 1950s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. And she actually sent me a duplicate of these four file drawers of models. This is a great historical archive which I still have. During the 1980s and 1990s, I belonged to something called an Amateur Press Alliance. This was a group of about 20 people. There would be somebody designated as an editor. This editor would compile materials sent in by these, submitted by these 20 members, and then make up a bound magazine that was sent to all the members. I'll mention some of the people that were members of this group, luminaries in the origami world. One of them was David Lister, the famous historian of origami from England. And some of his greatest writing, most extensive writings on the history of origami were based on his submissions to this bi-monthly magazine that we received. I don't know if I mentioned it, but it was called Fold, F-O-L-D. Another member of this group was uh, James Sakota. 
Mike Lawton, uh, Nick Robinson. Nick Robinson was a member of this group before he published his first book. Michael LaFosse was also a member of this group. Florence Tempko, Vianne Cornelius. When I retired from uh, teaching at Purdue University in 1960, we moved to sunny California, to the San Diego area. I was fortunate to meet and interact with Florence Tempko, a prolific writer of introductory books on origami, and Vianne Cornelius. So I started to attend the meetings of the Greater San Diego Origami Group. Vian Cornelius was a very modest person. She was a genius at displaying origami, and for many years at the big New York convention, uh, she was in charge of the display. And she and Florence were, I would say, responsible for one of the first major museum exhibits of origami in the world at the Minge International Museum in Balboa Park, San Diego, that opened in 2003. Vian Cornelius was the co-curator Moreover, she was the co-curator of a follow-up exhibit at Hangar 7 in Salzburg, Austria. Vianne was also one of the founders of the West Coast Origami Group, West Coast Origami Convention, or Pacific Coast Origami Convention. Vianne roped me into the exhibit at uh, Balboa Park. Vianne was responsible for having several of my models in this exhibit. Vianne also got me involved in the third international convention on origami science, mathematics, and education that occurred in Asilomore in 2005, I think, and also in the fourth uh, convention that occurred at Caltech in 2006. Since then, I've had papers or articles, uh, the uh, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh conventions on origami science, mathematics, and education. Most of these papers were on uh, as an enrichment tool for mathematics education from kindergarten through high school. At the Minge exhibit, I was fortunate to meet a person that was really responsible for my first major book on origami. This was Crystal Mills. Crystal Mills was a retired mathematics teacher, and she was also the editor of a mathematics journal for high school teachers. And she was also a former technical editor for Key Curriculum Press, which uh, published supplementary textbooks for high school mathematics. We got together. I wrote a book with her. Here you can see it. Uh, Unfolding Mathematics with Origami Boxes. So basically, the book was published as a supplementary geometry book for high schools. So in the book, we designed about 30 different models, box models such as this one here. For each one of the models, we gave a series of mathematics problems associated with, with the box. So the mathematics problems had to do with uh, relating the features of the crease pattern to the various uh, features of the box, such as the length and the width of the box, the width of the bands in this case, and so forth. This book was published by Key Curriculum Press. I think it sold about 10,000 copies. I should mention I did write one book before this um, with uh, Leon Brown. This book was really a precursor to this more extensive book. Here's the British Origami Society version of it. Crystal and I published one more book on boxes for C&T Publications, which is really a, a publisher of books for quilters. So uh, we designed a bunch of boxes that uh, could be folded from stiffened cotton cloth. There's a product called Stiffy. If you treat the cloth with the Stiffy, the cloth becomes like foldable like paper. My other publications were of two kinds, one involving uh, folding dollar bills. I published two books and I called them Tipping with Origami Money Folds. And uh, I had a, a one condition was that every every model in the book had to display the face or faces of George Washington. The first book I, I wrote on the topic is this one. Again, Tipping with Origami Money Folds. My last book, actually my eighth book, uh, was also one on money folds, so I called this Tipping, More Tipping with Origami Money Folds. I published one other book on money folds. These were models of Jewish symbols. 
So I called this book Jewish Guilt. My other two books were uh, this one, uh, which featured a bunch of origami <clears throat> bowls and vases and other containers. This, is, this would be one example. And also this book. One of the books I like best of mine is called Tessellation Inspired Origami Box Designs. When I started working in tessellations, I got to a point where I got tired of pre-creasing a whole bunch of things before you started to make anything. So I said, well, I'm gonna stop at the first unit and make a box. So I called this uh, Tessellation Inspired Origami Boxes. This is one example of what I call a Tessellation Inspired Box. Here's another one. And uh, finally, there is a branch of origami that you could call pillow origami. So here's an example of pillow uh, with a, a, a stiffened fabric uh, origami patch. So um, I collaborated with my daughter Cheryl on this. So I, <laughs> I made the patch and she made the rest of the of the pillow. Uh, I think I have one more book in me, and this is on boxes that are triangular, and I uh, have about 30 different designs for these triangular boxes that have decorative lids. Well, that's about all I want to say about myself. The rest of uh, information about myself you can see in some of the photographs that accompany this video. So long.